Hey Game Makers! Today we're going to look at a few super easy ways to do super easy puzzles, most of which were inspired from other games. Keep in mind, there are usually several ways things like this can be done. We want to push a boulder, probably a couple boulders. Create a boulder event. In your event command, set a movement route for this event, and make sure skip if cannot move is checked. Add move away from player. We're also going to play a sound effect, because we're cool like that. You'll also want to make sure the event's trigger is set to player touch. Then click OK. This effect can also be achieved with the help of the Auto Push NPC plugin. You only need to create an event, although with that method, you won't be able to make a sound effect play. If you want a boulder to only be able to be pushed once, it's a bit more work. We're going to make a copy of our original boulder event. At the end of our movement route, we're going to turn on Self Switch A. Next, we copy and paste that page. Now, on the second page, set the condition to Self Switch A. Delete all of the event commands for this page. Lastly, copy and paste this page. Now, on page 3, set the condition to a new switch. We're going to be normal here and call it Reset Traps. In the event commands, turn Self Switch A off. Make sure this page's trigger is set to parallel, and click OK. There's one other event we need to make. On all of the teleporters leaving the map, before we teleport, we need to set our reset traps switch. Then we're going to put in a wait command to make sure it activates. And then we teleport, and turn our reset trap switch off. This will make it so we'll only be able to push this boulder once until we leave the map and come back again. Want to push a boulder on a switch to make stuff happen? Let's make a copy of our original boulder event. You might also want to name it. Yes, name the pet rock. Anyway, first, let's create a switch-looking event. Pick a graphic, and you'll want to make sure the priority is set to below character. I'd also recommend giving this event a name, too. With that made, we need to create a parallel event. We'll need to create two variables. We'll be calling them event X and event Y. We'll be using these to figure out where the heck the stupid rock is. In control variables, select our event X variable, then select game data then character and our boulder event. Set this to map X, and then do the same for our event Y variable for the event's map Y. Now our switch event is located at 33, 7. The X and Y coordinates of the tile you're selected on can be seen in the lower right hand corner of the editor. Now underneath our variables, we're going to set up a conditional branch. Set it to the event X variable, and make the X coordinate of the switch event, in our case, 33. Click OK. Now, inside of that conditional branch, we'll be creating another one, this time for event Y, and our coordinate, which again, in our case, is 7. Inside of here is what will happen when our rock hits the switch. We're just going to have it say a cute little cliché message about an exit or something. We're also going to turn our switch graphic to make it animate like it's being pressed down, and then play a sound, because that's what secret switches do. Lastly, add a self-switch and a new page that turns on with it, so that our text won't continuously repeat. So, we're going to push the rock on the switch, and then stuff will happen. Instead of a switch, maybe you'd rather just push that annoying little rock into a pit of despair! Er, that is... Push it down a hole and make it appear on a different map. I believe I've seen a plugin that allows you to actually transfer events to other maps, but we're just going to keep it simple and use switches for this. Again, we're going to copy past our original boulder. We're also going to copy that parallel event full of all the conditional branches. Now, make a whole event. I'm going to be using an unpassable tile from the default tile sets, so we're going to put it on through so our boulder can go on it. Additionally, you're welcome to put a teleporter here to the lower level where the boulder will be falling. Let's head back over to our event locations event. For this example, our coordinates are still going to be the same. We are, however, going to change our movement route to beat the boulder instead, and have it slowly fade out of existence by changing the opacity a few times. After that, we're going to turn on a new switch called Pushed Boulder A. Now, back on our boulder event, let's create a new blank page, and set the conditions to our pushed boulder A switch. And now, on our lower floor map, we'll create another boulder event with the pushed boulder A switch condition on. This will make it so the lower level boulder won't appear until you push it down first. Ice pack! Now, you can do these all with events, but this is actually something that the Yep Regions Events plugin is quite spectacular at handling, so make sure to have that on. As always, download links will be in the description, and if you need to know how this plugin works, I've made a tutorial that will point you in the right direction. We're going to be setting Region 3 to Common Event 6. You can set these however you like, though. Now let's go and create our Common Event. 
Set a move route for the player, having them constantly step forward. We'll also be turning the walking animation off. Make absolutely sure to check off skip if cannot move, and turn off wait for completion. This event will be playing while we're on ice. We're also going to go set another common event. Let's head back to our plugins and set region 4 to the next common event, common event 7. We're going to have this one play after we get off of the ice. Just set movement route and turn the walking animations back on. That's all. Click OK. Click on the regions tab in the tile selector. We'll be covering the ice with region 3, and then covering the exits from the ice with region 4. This will make it so we'll slide on the ice automatically, and then turn our walking animations back on when we're done. Last puzzle for today is something that took Noob Echo months to figure out back when I started making games. And that is really sad. Similarly to the Satopolis Gym in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, we'll be making it so we need to step on all of the ice before we'll be able to proceed. And if we step on the same tile twice, it will break and teleport us to a lower level. First, we've got wonderful little Harold here blocking our path. On page two, have him set with a new variable. We'll be calling it Steps on All the Ices. Now, there are 23 different ice tiles that we need to step on, so we'll be setting this number to 23. So basically, if you've stepped on all the tiles, he's got a custom movement set to step out of the way. As for our icebreaker event, make sure to set it to player touch. In the event commands, set our step on all the ices variable to add 1. This will make it increase the variable when we step on it. Then let's play a sound effect, because sound effects make everything better, and end it by turning self switch A on. On the second page, we'll be putting a whole graphic, again on through and below characters, and triggered by player touch. We're going to flash the screen and play a sound effect to make sure the player knows that they done screwed up. We'll also be changing our steps on all the ices variable back to zero, to reset the count for the next attempt. Additionally, let's turn our reset trap switch on. We'll also put an await command for a few frames, and then teleport to a previous floor, or in this case a beach, because why not? Then turn the reset trap switch off again. Set a third page to turn on with the reset trap switch. Make sure this one is set to parallel. And in the event commands, have it turn self switch A off. What this will do is, when we step on it a second time, the ice will break, resetting the ice step count, and turning on the reset trap switch, which will activate the new page which turns self switch A off, and we'll end up back on the first page when we come back. Once you've got that one working, Copy and paste it on all the ice patches. Now let's see if we can actually complete this. And that's all for our super simple puzzles. If you'd like to know how to do a specific sort of puzzle or trap, leave me a comment and I'll add it to the next puzzles video. Also, I made a Facebook page, you know, to go along with that Twitter one. So if you want video updates and news about upcoming gamey stuff, it will be linked in the description. Till next time, see you later gamers!